Thank you, Sophie. Good evening and welcome to Look North. Our top story tonight. A woman and a child die after fire tears through a Huddersfield house. Another child is critically injured. Police have told us the fire is being treated as suspicious, but also that they're not looking for anyone in connection with it. We will have the very latest on the investigation for Court trimming his beard on the motorway. South Yorkshire Police share driver's bad behaviour as an unmarked HGV is used by officers. And I'm here in Settle, where over the summer 15,000 people are expected to come and see the Flower Pot Festival. And after another very warm day, we've got a muggy night to come. Later in the night, thunderstorms are going to develop. We've got a warning from the Met Office there could be some torrential downpours. I'll be back later in the programme with all the details. Hello there, thank you for joining us. We start tonight with a desperately sad story. A woman and a child have died and a 10-year-old girl is in a critical condition in hospital after a house fire in Huddersfield. Fire crews were called to the property on Leeds Road early this morning and all three were taken to hospital where the 31-year-old woman later died. Now, in the last couple of hours, police have sadly informed us that the 8-year-old girl has also died. Police say they are treating the fire as suspicious and they aren't looking for anyone else. Our reporter Olivia Richwald has spent the day at the scene. The aftermath of a terrible fire which tore through this terraced house in Huddersfield, killing a woman and an eight-year-old girl. The fire service rescued the family from the blaze on Leeds Road, but police confirmed that the 31-year-old woman had sadly died. The two girls, aged eight and ten, were taken to hospital in a critical condition. The woman was well known and well liked in the community. We spoke to these neighbours before the eight-year-old's death had been confirmed. She was very, 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 very kind to me and she really helped me out a lot. And she, last time she gave me sweets when I was in the shop. She talks with me a lot. She helps me because I'm not a computerised person and she's very kind. Friendly. It's shocking to be fair because I was only speaking to her the other day. All day, people living near here have said how sad and shocked they are by the events of the early hours of this morning. Everyone was hoping and praying that the two girls would make a recovery. But sadly, now the police have confirmed that the eight year old girl has died. The fire service and police have been carrying out door-to-door -door inquiries and the scene has been cordoned off while forensic investigations have been taking place. The police have said that the fire is being treated as suspicious, but they are not looking for anyone else in connection with the incident. They have added that their thoughts have gone out to everyone affected by this tragic incident, and they would be keen to speak to anyone who was in the area at the time and might have information which would help their investigation. Olivia Richwald, BBC Look North, Huddersfield. Thank you, Olivia. Now, some other news coming into the newsroom today. A fourth man has been charged after violent disorder in Hare Hills two weeks ago. Large crowds gathered on the streets as a police car was overturned and a double-decker bus set on fire. 21-year-old Silan Valentin Palagia has been charged with violent disorder and arson. 20 arrests have been made so far as investigations into what happened continue. The inquest into the death of a teenager from Keithley has heard how his sister raised concerns with his mental health key worker ten days before he took his own life. 16-year-old Finn Hall died in November 2022 after struggling with mental health since the age of 11. His key worker advised the family to monitor him closely and to go to A&E if they were worried. The case wasn't referred to the crisis team as Finn hadn't indicated he planned to hurt himself imminently. The Canal and Rivers Trust has apologised to 20 boat owners left stranded after a stretch of the waterway in Hebden Bridge in West Yorkshire dried up. The barges were left high and dry between Mythamroyd and Hebden Bridge after a leaking lock further downstream drained the water levels from the Rochdale Canal. The Trust says the problems developed after some boat users ignored warnings not to take their vessels through the lock. You're watching Wednesday's Look North. Still to come on tonight's programme... He's just 15, but watch Josh go at the wheel of this single-decker bus. Now, these pictures will alarm you. 
A motorway driver has been caught trimming his beard with no hands on the steering wheel in South Yorkshire. The video you're going to see was filmed by police officers in an unmarked HGV, with the man among more than 240 people caught for driving offences over five days in July. With the story, Ali Constable. No hands on the wheel, steering with his knees and shaving. Drivers on the motorway and on their phones. They were filmed from a lorry cab during a police operation in South Yorkshire this month. It's shocking because, you know, we all, we all use the roads. So, you know, when that goes wrong, it could be me or my family or you or your family that, that could be um, the unwitting victim of that. Um, so it's, um, you know, it's just unbelievable that people think that they can do that. For Matt and his team, it's an ongoing battle. But this filming is from an unmarked lorry and gives them a great vantage point with lorry, van and car drivers all being caught. During this operation, 240 drivers were stopped. 74 of those weren't wearing a seatbelt, with 45 being on their phones. Police say drivers like these increase the risk of deadly crashes. People will often think that we're targeting these offences and it's all about revenue and money, and it's absolutely not. It's about trying to make the road safer. You know, very sadly, we've had 27 people have lost their lives on the, on the roads of South Yorkshire this year so far. You're in charge of something that, that is effectively a, a wanton weapon, isn't it, really, in the wrong hands. So uh, we're wanting people to take responsibility for, them, for themselves when they get behind a wheel. Fines, points on your licence, even driving bans for people who don't keep their attention on the road. If you're travelling at 30 miles an hour, then you travel at three car lengths for every single second. So if you imagine that you see a text message, you read that text message, you decide on what you're going to reply and you reply to it, how many seconds have gone on? But we shouldn't accept that death occurs on our roads. We should be pushing and we should be shocked when we hear of these deaths. It's people like these who police are asking to keep all of their focus on the road ahead. Ollie Constable, BBC Look North, Sheffield. Now to some better driving. As every teenager knows, you want to arrive at your school prom in style. 15-year-old Josh from Sheffield loves buses and his parents surprised him by getting him to the party on a classic double-decker. Well, there's one thing better than riding, and that, of course, is driving. Radio Sheffield teamed up with first bus in the city to get him behind the wheel of a real full-size bus. Simon Fake hopped aboard. This afternoon, you're going to be driving a bus yourself. You're kidding. You're going to be driving a bus. How do you feel? Wow. <laughs> I don't know what to say. What a moment. And practically before anyone could shout, tickets please, Josh was at the Olive Grove depot of first bus. Yeah. yeah I'm yeah. shocked again. Yeah. I've got no power steering in this. Yeah, it's very tight on steering. Manual yeah. gearbox. First up, something shiny and vintage, courtesy of South Yorkshire Transport Museum. He's been mad about vehicles and transport since about the age of two, three. <laughs> since he was very little, like with your original little train set and you, you could buy little wooden vehicles and roads and stuff ever since we were tiny. He certainly turned heads when he recently arrived at his prom on a double-decker. Oh, it was amazing. In reality, I didn't think it would ever happen, but it did and... He's had such good feedback from everyone about it. It was so, it was so quirky. It was definitely him. When he pulled up, everyone were like, we knew it'd be you, Josh. We knew it'd be you, Josh. But wheels on the bus were made to go round and round. He might not be old enough to drive a car legally on the road. Right, so let me explain some controls to you. But he took to the very front seat as though he were to the depot born. It didn't take long before he was off and clocking up the laps. It was hard to tell who was more delighted. Bless him. Oh my God. Again, let it roll off that brake, but keep on the foot brake now. Let it roll around, mate. Really good. Uh, I really, I really enjoyed that. Being able to go around this little loop quite a couple of times, I've been able to get used to it, and I, I've really enjoyed this. I've it's been one of my best experiences, I think, driving a vehicle so far. I've really enjoyed it. Wow. Is bus driving for you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was really, really good for someone. We've not even got a car licence he did. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. They're not easy at all. You've got to realise where your steering wheels are behind you. Um, you've got the weight, the length, the size of it. He did really, really well. 
So from here, it's driving license first, and then who knows? If life is about enjoying what you do, Josh is more than likely to be beaming broadly as he picks you up from a bus stop. It doesn't seem like a job he would ever tire of. Simon Thake, BBC Look North, Sheffield. Well done, Josh. I was there when we filmed that and we had a great afternoon. I would absolutely go for a ride with him. He was fantastic. Now, it is one of North Yorkshire's most popular beauty spots and over the years, plenty has been written about it. Brimham Rocks near Harrogate is about to go one step further, though, with the appointment of its very own writer-in-residence, a position that aims to capture the magic and mystery of a very special place indeed. With the story, Phil Connell. On the edge of the Yorkshire Dales, the drama of Brimham Rocks has been inspiring writers and artists for hundreds of years. I think it's just a really hidden little gem, a gorgeous space. Poet Natalie Davis is one of many to have fallen under its awe-inspiring spell. So fitting then that she's just been made writer in residence for Brimham Rocks, a brand new post which, through poetry, aims to capture the mystery and magnificence of this special place. I love nature writing, I love sort of forming things into poetry and love just being outdoors so it was really the perfect opportunity it felt so I was just so so overwhelmed and it's amazing to now be able to actually make that come to life. The appointment of writer in residence has been made by the National Trust and the literature group Word Up North Alongside Natalie's poetry, writing workshops will be held, with members of the public also being encouraged to write about why Brimham Rocks is special to them. Something that really stood out to me is that these rocks were actually formed, you know, m millions of years ago. For me, I'm really thinking about migrations and the passing of time and how things change and how things form. All the poetry written will be published in October, words that will no doubt match this beautiful place. Phil Connell, BBC Look North, Brimham Rocks. Thanks, Phil. You see, it's official. Rocks are the new rock and roll. So, from one beautiful landscape to another, take a look at my fantastic giraffe friend over here. Would you believe he's entirely made out of flower pots. You'll find over 200 of these creations planted throughout the North Yorkshire town of Settle for their annual flower pot show, and over 15,000 people are expected to make the journey to see them. We sent Beth Parsons along to take a look. It's just wonderful how the whole thing has come together. I mean, far beyond our expectations. The Flower Pot Festival is an amazing collection of flower pot creations uh, which are dotted all the way around the town. There's, there's possibly 300 of them all together. Um, there's not a theme, it's just that they have to be made out of flower pots and they have to make people smile. The local people make their own. They don't have to get permission to do it, they just put them out and we're always getting surprises. Well, first of all, the magic ingredient, of course, is flower pots. Mainly they're donated by the community. And then we drill holes in them and then we use cable ties to attach the um, flower pots to each other. And if you've made it right, it stands up. That stands up. <laughs> So we, we've made a climber because we, we do uh, outdoor adventures, so we take people climbing on the cliffs around here and we take people caving and we take people on outdoor activities. So we thought it would be fun to have a, have a flower pot man climbing up the side of the, of the building. This is Jerry the giraffe and he took us approximately 14 hours. Why a giraffe? Um, I'm a wildlife photographer and we sell wildlife inspired products. My favourite flower pot was the Tom and Jerry because I like animals. The flower pot I like the best is Popeye and olive oil because it's outside my grandma's shop. Any particular one favourite? I think Mr Tickle. We've been exploring the town and like taking pictures with the flower pots. My favourite one was the bumblebee because I like stripes. How many do you think you've spotted so far? Uh, I spotted like 27 or something.
how creative were those? Thanks, Beth, for showing us around. Now, if I'm uh, Mr Flubberdob, here comes Little Weed in a joke that uh, you have to be at least 70 years old to get, no? OK, just about gone over my head then. Brilliant, OK, thanks, <laughs> Keely. So, tonight, yes. good for plants today in the sunshine, not so good necessarily overnight. Well, I think the, the rain overnight will knock the plants over, yeah, not good for anyone I don't think. Uh, yeah, we have got a warning from the Met Office for thunderstorms which will develop uh, later on tonight and into tomorrow. In the meantime we've had another lovely warm day. Temperatures actually at Scarborough didn't exceed 20 degrees, it stayed below 20 degrees but the beach was full uh, nevertheless. It was warmer inland our second picture uh, of the Peak District, um, on the edge of the Peak District should I say, uh, nearby Sheffield Field got up to nearly 27 degrees. Uh, so you can keep your pictures coming in to the Weather Watchers page, easy to sign up there, or on uh, social media as well, keely.donovan. So yes, after another warm day, a muggy, humid night to come, so no surprise that we're looking at a breakdown. We've got uh, thunderstorms, uh, longer spells of rain on the way, and some of these thunderstorms into tomorrow morning could bring some torrential downpours. There could be the odd shower still around uh, on Friday morning, but then Friday, another very warm and a decent day, actually. And then this weather system will bring fresher conditions into the weekend, uh, overnight into Saturday. It should clear away on Saturday, leaving us with a lot of dry weather over the weekend, but temperatures will return to near normal. Uh, you can't really make it out very well on the satellite picture, but we did have a fair amount of high and medium level cloud uh, today. Uh, and that cloud could produce the odd shower in the short term, but generally dry. Some clear spells this evening, but cloud is going to thicken from the west overnight. You can see these showers merging into longer spells of rain uh, later in the night. Uh, temperatures dropping back to a very muggy uh, 15 or 16 degrees. Let's have a quick look at those high water times then. 20 past uh, 2 in Scarborough and 10 to 3 in Bridlington. So into tomorrow morning, showers or longer spells of rain, some torrential downpours as it moves eastwards. Uh, but it will clear away, so as you can see, uh, conditions brightening up through the day. The odd shower going up through the afternoon, so the odd shower developing, particularly uh, across parts of South Yorkshire. They could be heavy and thundery, but they won't be as widespread as through tomorrow morning's rush hour. Uh, temperatures tomorrow still above average, 25 degrees inland. And again, with that sea breeze along the coast, it will feel that little bit fresher there, but still pleasant in the the sunshine. So the showers will tend to lose their intensity into tomorrow evening. The odd light shower still around on Friday morning. It should brighten up with some sunshine, feel very warm once again. Overnight rain is freshening things up for the weekend. Thank you, I think. So you've never heard of Bill and Ben the Flower Pot Men? I have, but I just didn't get your joke. Oh, right, OK. Well, <laughs> this is the story of my life. Thank you very much indeed, Keely. That's as far as we go now. I'm back with a look at your late headlines at half past ten. See you then. Bye-bye.